as many Americans do, I went Black Friday shopping and spent a bunch of money I don't have. But uh, I ended up with a lot of awesome movies and, and a couple goodies. One thing in particular that I'm actually going to give a little mini review for today that I've been wanting forever, and it finally went on sale. But uh, Black Friday this year actually wasn't bad. You Usually, okay, I worked retail for like six years, way too damn long. And Black Friday is like, when you watch Lord of the Rings and you see these giant like CG armies rushing the battlefield with their swords, those are customers. Like, Black Friday is crazy. I have noticed throughout the years since these online sales have been getting way better than they used to be. For example, like one of these movies I got, and I'll show you guys everything I got here, but uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, right? 4K, $30 at Best Buy, and they would not price match it with Amazon because Amazon said it was sold out. I ordered it through Amazon Prime, still got it like two days later. Nine bucks. Nine bucks. And this is what I mean. Online sales are tremendous right now. So it's really cutting into Black Friday. And uh, this year wasn't really that bad. We went to the stores and there was no crazy rush to registers. There wasn't even a whole lot of people at these stores compared to previous years. So um, Black Friday is not as bad as it used to be. There are still way better deals online. But I like to go raid Walmart and Best Buy just to see all the good movie deals. Because I still like to buy my movies physically. I, I don't like to download my movies. And I buy them in 4K when I can. But I always wait till Black Friday because these movies that come out for like 35 bucks, Black Friday's always got them dirt cheap. PlayStation Store and Xbox had a ton of good deals too. Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, nine bucks. This movie wasn't horrible. I thought the first Jurassic World was way better. Um, I would probably put this one... Jurassic Park 3 is still the worst one, I'll say that. <laughs> I like all the other ones better than Fallen Kingdom. Deadpool 2, I, I still haven't seen it. I just, I missed out on it when it was in theaters. And I waited until Black Friday to get the Blu-ray, so I'll be watching this today, actually. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Ant-Man was one of my favorite Marvel movies. I love all those side characters, and I never thought that we would have an Ant-Man full motion picture in theaters. And Ant-Man and the Wasp, the sequel, good movie. I liked it. Die Hard 2018, or uh, Skyscraper. I like movies with The Rock. I'm a fan of The Rock. Uh, I'm not a wrestling fan, but I, I like him as a cheesy action actor. And this movie's pretty decent. But yes, it is practically a Die Hard remake. Also, another rock movie, Jumanji. I thought this movie was going to suck ass. And I saw it in theaters and I was laughing the whole time. So I, I do enjoy Kevin Hart and the rock shenanigans. And I just dropped all the other movies. Rampage, another video game based movie that should have sucked in every way. But it was way better than it should have been. By no means is this an Oscar award winning anything. But it's a fun little popcorn flick with monster battles. I also got Jigsaw. This is another movie I've been meaning to watch. I always liked the Saw movies. I've seen them all except for this one. I don't know why I didn't see this. When it came out in theaters, I wasn't interested for some reason. I just didn't think we needed uh, another one, but it was nine bucks. Might as well, right? Avengers Infinity War. This movie needs no introduction. This movie's fantastic. Fifteen bucks, 4K, awesome deal. Also picked up Black Panther for the same amount. Another movie I've been meaning to get since it came out on Blu-ray, so I'm glad I'm waited till it was on sale for 15. Ready Player One, a movie designed for my demographic. I mean, this I was the target audience for this movie specifically. Loved it. I think it was 15 at Best Buy also. The original Halloween in 4K. You could argue that this 1978 movie probably isn't gonna look much better, but I've rebought this movie since the VHS days over and over. So I'm gonna keep getting the most. Uh, pristine version of this movie repeatedly so this is going to go right in my box set replacing the original blu-ray and i got two more here i got tomb raider which honestly it wasn't that great it was a bit mediocre it was a fun little action flick also nine dollars so i probably wouldn't pay more than 15 for this movie last but not least i also got solo a star wars story which i really liked uh, if you've been following this channel for a little while, you know that I, I detest The Last Jedi. I do not like that movie at all. This one was actually a breath of fresh air when it came out. Too bad it didn't do too well because it was actually worth watching. And these things weren't really on sale, but I got these at Walmart. It's one of those, this is why you spend so much at Black Friday. You, you're walking around with your pile of shit, and then you see other things that you normally wouldn't buy, right? But you see it and you're like, hmm, it's Black Friday, it's pretty cheap. I got a little like $5 tin. I love these metal tins. I'm a big fan of these. Actually, I don't know if you guys can see it on camera. I have a Punch-Out one right here. I got on eBay for like 10 bucks. I think it's custom. I've never seen that in stores, but 
I like these metal tins. I got a Godzilla one up there too, but Pac-Man. Can't go wrong with Pac-Man. I think I'm going to put this out in our den area. In our house, our den, we have a dining room table in the middle, a recycle bin in the corner, and then just like random crap thrown about. So so I talked to my fiance and we're actually going to clean that up and I'm going to turn it into like a, an arcade room. So which we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But yeah, that's going to go in there. This is a, a wooden like uh, Black Panther poster canvas plaque, they call it, I guess. But this is the kind of stuff you see at Hobby Lobby. Uh, Walmart, though, had it, and I had to grab it. There was one left. It was just randomly sitting on, like, pillows. So I think someone, like, took it from a different part of the store and hit it. But this is beautiful. So you guys know I, I like collecting little Funko Pops. I'm very specific about the ones I get. I just get the ones I really like. So I'm super pumped for the Aquaman movie coming out in December. So I found Aquaman at GameStop, and I found Mera. I'm actually going to go ahead and open them. Whoa. Technically are open because uh, this one got into them and destroyed my boxes. So, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I open them anyways and I throw away the boxes. Otherwise, I would have been pissed. Aquaman. King of the Seven Seas. That is awesome looking. I love this pop. And there's Mera. His future wife and future queen of Atlantis. I like it. I like it. I also picked up some games on the PlayStation Network. I took a, uh, obviously I got them all digital, so here is a screenshot of the games. I've been trying to expand my PSVR collection. There, there just doesn't seem to be that many games out there, virtual reality-wise, on the PlayStation that are, uh, that are really worth paying for. I actually saw that Creed Rise to Glory had pretty decent reviews, and for half off, I, I picked that up. Why not? And I'm incredibly pumped to see the second movie. And Transference, I don't know much about. I saw the trailer, and it looked really trippy. Then Hollow Knight, I already have that game on the Switch, but I liked it so much that I'm just going to get the PlayStation version, and at least now, I can get trophies. And then DC LEGO Super Villains, I'm incredibly excited to start playing. I've always liked all those LEGO games. They're actually really fun for adult gamers, too. And they always go on sale. Never buy a LEGO game at full price. Onto my Xbox, I got the Batman Return to Arkham and Batman Return to Arkham City, the Arkham remasters. Five dollars. For both of them, total. I cannot express how much of a steal that was. Middle Earth Shadow of War. I don't know why I waited so long to get this game. The first one I really, really loved. But, um, yeah, finally got it for a decent price. Don't know when I'll get around to playing it. Always been a huge Tomb Raider fan. Been loving the rebooted Tomb Raider universe. I ended up getting the Croft Edition for like 45 bucks, which is great because originally it's 90 So it's got all the DLC. It's got everything. And, uh, Miss Pac-Man <laughs> for a dollar. I totally didn't need this game. Have it on a million emulators, have it on Xbox Live Arcade on 360, I have multiple versions of Pac-Man on the PS3 and whatnot. You can never go wrong with more Pac-Man. <laughs> so these games are constant re-releases and constant purchases. And here's what I was most excited about. The Arcade 1-Up Home Arcade. They're basically miniature arcades, even though they're not really that small. They're not full-size arcade units. I really wanted the Street Fighter one, but I couldn't find that one anywhere in a store on Black Friday. I am quite happy with this one, though, because I love Rampage. Rampage is one of my favorite arcade games. It has been since I was a child. Anything with giant monsters, I love. So Rampage is right up my alley. And it also includes Gauntlet, Joust, and Defender. Putting this thing together was about as hard or as easy as putting together Ikea furniture. It came with instructions that if you're looking at the picture, it's not 1000% accurate to where all the little holes are spaced out perfectly where they're supposed to be. But if you have even basic building skills, you could put it together. All you really need is a screwdriver and it comes with everything else you need. It sure is hell of a lot easier to work with than a actual full-size arcade. Recording all the footage of me putting it together, it was about a total of maybe a little under an hour, and that's only because I kept stopping to double-check the instructions to make sure I was doing it right. I am very impressed at how user-friendly they made the construction process. It's funny because when I had this thing on my cart at Walmart, several curious people would stop by and ask me where I picked it up, and two of them specifically decided not to get it because they were afraid of how complicated it could be to put together. So rest assured, 
shirt, if you're just not good at building things, this is really simple to put together. The inside of the machine is practically empty. It's just a bunch of wood put together, held together by little wooden posts and a couple of screws, and an LCD monitor that has like a computer style ribbon, plugs into the control panel for the arcade, which inside probably has some kind of laptop hard drive. And it's all powered through a power cord that's included. All a very simple process. The control panel feels good, and if you want to switch out the original ball tops of the joysticks, you can just twist them right off and buy whatever you want as your own. So it's actually pretty customizable if you want to do that. One complaint I do have, though, that I noticed after I put it all together, in front of the display, it has like a thin acrylic that scratches fairly easily. In all honesty, you can't really tell while you're playing the game, but when you have the monitor off or if you're looking at it at an angle, you can tell there's a couple of little scuffs that probably just happened during the manufacturing process or even shipping, possibly. It came out of the box this way. So if you get one of these, what I advise to do, before you put on the control panel, there's four little screws that keep the acrylic on top of the LCD monitor. So you could remove those four screws and take it off and kind of wipe it down a little bit. I actually had to do that because after I put the whole thing together, I noticed there were like little specks of dust and styrofoam between the acrylic and the actual screen. Removed the glass, gave it a nice little cleaning. The LCD monitor itself also came with some smudges on it. But once I cleaned it all up and put it all back together, it looked pretty crystal clear. Almost perfect. It's all turned on with a simple on-off button that you can just switch on and off. And there's also a volume control button that changes the volume in three levels. You can turn the volume off, you can put it halfway up, or full blast, which sounds great. It sounds fantastic. There's the boot up screen. You could pick any of these four games. Again, that's Rampage. You've got a Gauntlet, Joust, and Defender. And one of my biggest concerns before I purchased this was the screen. These games were meant for CRT monitors, and CRT monitors were beautiful, man. They, they were sharp as hell. So I was concerned at the video quality, what it would look like on an LCD. I don't know which LCD these are using, but the picture quality is outstanding. It's very vibrant, very bright, and very crisp. And I think it helps that there's an acrylic panel in front of it too, giving it that additional appearance of a gloss. All these games, of course, are emulated versions. They play extremely well. I mean, they play just like the original. I've played the original Rampage multiple times. I couldn't really notice a difference in terms of gameplay between this emulated version and an actual arcade, so quite happy with it. And to return to the main menu of games, it's as simple as holding down the Player 1 button for a couple of seconds, about 5 seconds or so, and then it'll take you to the main menu where you can pick other games. And right before every game loads also, it gives you a picture of the control panel and it shows you how the controls are mapped for that game. I was never too big of a fan of Gauntlet. Uh, it's a fun little game, but I mean, I, I get bored after a couple levels. Kind of rinse and repeat, which I, I guess you could say the same thing about Rampage, but I don't know. The Gauntlet game doesn't really hold my attention very much. I always preferred the newer Gauntlet games that came later on. And then another classic here, Joust. Probably as basic as it gets in this cabinet for controls. I mean, really, it's just moving left and right and then a flat button, which makes your ostrich flap up and down. And the goal is to hit the other players in just the right spot. And then, well, I mean, it's like a real joust. You're trying to knock the driver off the bird. Pretty fun game, very basic, but it plays just like it's supposed to. Now, Defender. Um, wow. I kind of feel like they should have picked a different game to include in this. And the reason I say that is... Just by looking at the control panel picture, the controls I don't feel translate well at all. And if you look at a quick Google search of the original Defender arcade control panel, you'll see what I mean. It's weird how it translates to this game. Because in the original, you had a joystick that moves you up and down. There's a reverse button, and then you have a hyperspace warp button, a smart bum, and then thrust and fire. All these buttons are spread around the Rampage arcade control panel. So it's really confusing while you're playing, remembering the Defender controls on this control panel it just it doesn't work well at all it's not intuitive I did get used to it after a little bit of struggling by treating the left joystick like a flight joystick and then having my thumb on the jump and punch buttons acting as the thrusters for my ship going forward and backward while all the other buttons provided all the other functions. It's really confusing and it's hard to explain, but it's something you just have to kind of feel out and get used to. Uh, like I said, I think it might have been a better idea picking a different game. Unfortunately, I've been having to play this sitting down on a chair. I prefer standing up and I'm not really a tall guy. I'm about 5'6", but even so, 
I still tower over this thing. So if you're a grown adult and you don't want to play this sitting down, you, you have to get the riser that lifts it about another foot in the air. Unfortunately, they were sold out everywhere I went to, but uh, when they restock, I'm definitely going to get one. I'm planning to collect most of these just so I can have like a an arcade area in my den. I think that would be a really cool hangout spot. So we'll see what happens. The next one will probably be Street Fighter Arcade. Let me know if you've enjoyed this review in the comments below, and I'll definitely review that one once I get it. I'll catch you guys later. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button with all of your strength. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on social media or go into my community tab for updates. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the channel directly on Patreon. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.